We'll get to episode 214 in just a moment, but before we do, I'd like to ask for your support of the Keystone Chapter of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. Go to supportkeystonechapter.org to make a donation. Any amount would be greatly appreciated, even a dollar or two, especially if you check that box that says you'll cover the fees. Again, supportkeystonechapter.org. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there, and welcome to episode 214 of I Can't See You. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really do appreciate you joining me for this episode, and as usual, I've got a few things to talk about. We're going to lead off with That Real Blind Tech Show, episode 109, which I was a part of. So go ahead and check it out. I'll put a link in the show notes. Episode 109 was about a service that if you're blind, you know what I'm talking about. The service is called Ira, and they just came out with some new pricing and some crazy plans. A lot of folks are upset about their pricing, which went up fairly substantially, but the way that they went about it by creating these new plans and creating and showing on their website retail plans made it a little bit difficult to figure out exactly what you're getting and how much it's going to cost you. You basically had to call. Now, in episode 109, Brian talks to Allison Malloy and myself about their new plans and about the rollout. Again, nobody likes to pay more. And that's an issue because everything costs more now. But the problem with Ira, they came up with three different levels and within those three levels, an additional three levels. For example, there's a silver plan, a gold plan, and a platinum plan. I don't know what the correspondence is to why they came up with those names. The silver plan, for example, they have a bottom tier. So the lowest basic account you could have is one user, $15 a month. I'm sorry, one user, 15 minutes per month, and the retail price on that is $65. The next level up, you can have two people share an account, and I think it was for 30 minutes, and then there's one more in the silver where two people can share it. So if you're a household and you have a couple of users, you can get something like that if you're not a heavy user. The next level up was platinum, Sorry, it was gold, and that I think you could share between three people. And I don't think they have to be in the same household. I think it's just a share three. But because of the way they call these plans, you have really no idea what you're getting. Hey, I've got a silver two-star plan. What does that mean? Well, I just told you that it's, again, two people sharing, but I don't remember how many minutes. It might be 30. Why not just call it two share 30 minutes or, or some? I mean, it's not as sexy, but at least you know what you're getting. So we talked about that, and then Brian talked to the CEO named Troy and Janine Stanley uh, of Buckeye Hairless Nuts fame from last year's draft video, which can still be seen at ICan'tSeeYou.com slash football, and I Swore I wasn't going to talk about fantasy this week, but there it is. I can see you.com slash football if you want to watch that video one more time. And if you haven't seen it yet, I, <laughs> I just can't believe it because I've been talking about this for almost a year and a half now. <laughs> so the IRA plans are a little convoluted. The price increase was dramatic. Troy and Janine really go over the reasoning behind it and – Look, everybody wants Ira to survive, and they've got to survive. They've got to pay. They've got to charge more if they're going to survive. So Janine and Troy talk about that. They talk about why they have the retail pricing up there. They have partners. For example, Target is a partner, meaning you could go to Target and use Ira for free. Even if you're, you don't have a plan, you could go into Target and say, hey, I need some help shopping around and get on Ira and – have that all done help uh, with the help that you need. So Target would pay $65 for those 15 minutes. And the top plan is for 800 minutes and something like $2,800 or something like that. The only way a consumer could figure out what they pay 
is by calling and talking to a CSR. And they will figure out, you answer a few questions, and then they will give you your pricing. So that $65 plan for the 15 minutes works out, Brian was talking about, somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks, probably closer to 50 bucks. Still a lot, but most calls are pretty short. And it's just something that it, it had to be done if they're going to survive. They have to survive. And to survive, you got to make money. That's the bottom line for any business is the bottom line, as I've mentioned 8 million times here. So go ahead and check that out. That's That Real Blind Tech Show, episode 109. It dropped uh, Monday or Tuesday uh, of the week. And I'm recording this on Sunday. I'm actually, this is the second time I'm recording this episode because the first time I recorded it, I didn't like it. As I was editing it, I got about two-thirds of the one done, uh, two-thirds of the way done editing, didn't like it, and I got rid of it. And so this one hopefully will have very few edits because I do want to get it out today. It's Sunday afternoon. I recorded the first time on, on Friday afternoon or Friday uh, – well, actually, it was Friday night, Friday the 13th in the 11th hour, and I, I didn't like it as I went through it whether I was tired and was forgetting things from my outline. I'm not sure. So the next thing I wanted to mention was my iPhone. And I'm going to talk more about this in the next episode. I'm trying to keep what I had in the previous recording similar. And there's more to add to it because I went to the Apple store today. But I'm going to leave that for the next episode because I am just infuriated with what went down today. And I'm going to pass on that for now. Just know that I was having, still having difficulties with my phone on two fronts. One was the focus issue, which I've mentioned before. That's where you, let's say you want to call somebody back who's called you earlier in the day. And so you would find their name on your recents list. And then, again, when you're using voiceover, you have to touch what you want and you hear the person's name. Let's say you're calling your friend Joe. So you find Joe on that list and you hear it say Joe and then you would double tap after you hear it say what you want. In the past, and I guess it's since iOS 16 came out and, and it focused has, focus has been an issue for more than iOS 16, but it just seems like it happens often now. Almost every time I place a call using the recents list, I end up calling somebody else. And I would say that if I were cited and I called the wrong person, well, maybe you touched the wrong name on your recents list. But again, with voiceover, you've got to hear the person's name who you want, and then you can double tap. And when you double tap, you can double tap anywhere on the screen because the focus should be on Joe, and when you double tap, Joe should be the one you call. It happened to me twice last week where I got to, again, let's just use the example of Joe. I wanted to call Joe, and I don't have a friend named Joe, by the way. I heard Joe, and I double tapped and I ended up calling Phyllis instead. And fortunately, when I called Phyllis, and these names are all made up, <laughs> when I called Phyllis, it went to voicemail right away. So I didn't even realize I had called Phyllis because I had, like I said, I found Joe's name in the recents, double tap, and the only time I knew it was Phyllis was when I heard the voicemail come on. So it's been an issue, and it's not just with the phone. When you're on a web page, when I'm in Safari and I hear back button, and then I go to double tap, right before I double tap, it switches to something else, whether it's a link on the page or some other navigation or something like that. And it's so frustrating. And in some things, it happens, like with YouTube, to close a video, it doesn't, it doesn't stay on the closed video it will always change. So you almost have to hear it. And before it even finishes telling you what it is, you're going to quickly double tap if you want to close or go into something else. It's, it's just been a big issue for me. And more importantly with my phone, whenever I use my earbuds, and yes, I still use the kind of earbuds that plug in with the lightning port, whether I'm on a call or I'm on a Zoom meeting if I'm not sitting in front of my computer for the Zoom meeting. And I like to walk around, like I've said before. So when, if I don't have to be at my computer to read a report or look at something, and again, it's hard to do while you're 
listening to a Zoom call and trying to find something uh, using either text to speech or voiceover. So if I can avoid it, I like to have do the Zoom meeting on my phone and I can walk around and everything is good. When I do that Zoom meeting, when I get done and we end the meeting and I get out of Zoom, I unplug my earbuds and I put them back where I usually keep them. And then I go to use Siri or dictation. It doesn't work. It does not work at all. It's almost like the microphone is shut off. And I don't know what the problem is. So I had an appointment today with Apple. Uh, The spoiler alert for next week's episode is it did not go well. (laughs) But it's just an issue, and my phone, Jane and I were talking. I had to call her on the landline because my phone was supposedly restoring. We believe we got our phones in December 2019. I'm not sure if it was 2019 or 2018, and I'll look it up once I finish recording because if it's only three years old, I I know I'm out of date with Apple Care, but it's just frustrating to me. The two, they're two big issues, and... It's just ongoing, and it's just unreal. The only thing I didn't hear today at the Apple Store is I've never seen anything like that. Fortunately, I didn't hear that today, but I'll have more on that next week. A couple of people said something to me today that just infuriated me. And again, I'll I'll get into it in the next episode because this episode (laughs) is from something that came out of dinner a week ago Friday with some folks from the Keystone Chapter who had gift certificates for Becca Weber's family's restaurant in Conshohocken. In 2021, at the state convention in Harrisburg, Lisa won a $25 gift card for the restaurant. Jim won a $25 gift card for the restaurant. And I did not win one, but I was gifted one from somebody who lives in Erie, Connie, who makes those delicious cookies that I won in one of the (laughs) auctions at this year's uh, convention. Connie said, oh, here, you'll use that. Why don't you take it? And Lisa's like, yeah, go ahead. And then we could all get together and go, you and me and Jim and whoever else. So I took it. So we finally got to the restaurant, and it was Liz and I and Lisa and Becca and Harriet and Jim and his wife, Pat. And so we're sitting around talking while we're having dinner, and Lisa mentions Southeastern Guide Dogs. And she had texted me about this, and of course, I had no recollection of it. In fact, she pulled it up on her phone, and she said, oh, here it is. And she handed Liz the phone, and Liz read the exchange. Hey, I just saw this TV commercial for Southeastern Guide Dogs. The only audio that was on the commercial was music. And I said, wow, that's crazy. I'll have to look into that because that is just ridiculous. And I immediately forgot about it. That was back in early December, and now we're at dinner in early January or mid-January, I guess at this point, maybe early January, I guess it was the 6th. And so we're talking about it again, and don't you know, Liz had recorded a show on the Cooking Channel, and I don't remember what show, and she saw the commercial Lisa was talking about. So she kept it, she stopped playing the recording, she got me, and we watched the commercial. I had no idea what was going on. (laughs) I had absolutely no clue. Liz is describing to me what's happening. Oh, there's a dog running around in the in, in the grass, and this is happening, and that's happening. And then some graphics came up, and she read the graphics to me, Southeastern Guide Dogs, guidedogs.org. And I thought, this is so unbelievable. I got I to gotta call somebody. I got to go see who I can talk to there. And I didn't think I'd be able to find a number as easily as I did because I was expecting I'd have to email So when I sat down, I came down to Studio B, infuriated. I sat down and I went to their website and man, right at the top of the page was the phone number down in Florida. And so I called it and it was towards the end of the day. So I left a voicemail. (laughs) The next morning, while I was in the shower, a voicemail was left for me by Ashley. And Ashley was very apologetic and she was, she sounds very upbeat. And, and I talked to her later in the day and I didn't talk, I didn't call her right back because at the time I didn't know where Liz had seen the commercial and any of the particulars. But in her voicemail to me, Ashley said, oh, those are described. 
We have audio description on all our commercials. We pay to have that done. But again, the audio description only works on two accounts. If you have it turned on on your box for your TV, at your, for your cable in your house, and it's set up right from wherever it's playing. And I don't know if that commercial ran as part of Cooking Channel or if it ran from the local cable provider, meaning Verizon Fios. I'm not sure. But I am going to look into it because it didn't work. When I called Ashley back and we talked about it, again, she was very apologetic. I said, listen, there is no need to apologize. I said, my wife is not visually impaired. And to be honest, when we watch cable, I never turn on audio description because she's the describer. And when I watch without her, I try to muddle through it if I can. When I watch on Amazon Prime or I watch on Netflix, I turn it on. In fact, I have the profile set up so I don't have to do anything. So it's not a pain in the neck to figure out what's going on. Bing, bang, boom, I do it. I'm very excited to watch Jack Ryan on Prime because I know that the audio description on that is outstanding, or at least in the first two seasons it was. So I'm I'm expecting a lot of great things. (laughs) And I especially liked that series because they had different folks read the subtitles. So maybe it was a woman describing what was going on in the episode, but then another voice read the subtitles. Now, as I've previously mentioned, when I watched things like Money Heist, it was all the same audio description and there, there were no subtitles because I had to watch the dub version. I think there was just too much information, as I previously said, to get where you could have the subtitles, watch it with subtitles. So also, as I mentioned before, when you have a show like that and it's dubbed, if I ever bumped into one of those actors on the streets when we finally moved to Spain, ha, 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 I would have no idea who they are because I did not hear their voice in that show, I heard whoever was reading the lines. And it's, I hate that you have to do it that way, but in some foreign shows and movies, it has to be done that way because there's just too much information to tell you what's going on as well as to read subtitles. There's just not enough time in between everything and not to talk over the dialogue. So when I found out that it was described, I immediately turned on audio description on the cable box in our living room. And when I say I, I mean Liz, because I can't, <laughs> I can't read this stuff enough. And I, again, I'm not turning on the voice uh, text-to-speech for the menus because then Liz will not know how to shut it off. At least that one I think you can do via the voice remote. But again, we didn't do it. Liz just came in and I had her do it and we talked about it. And I pulled it up on my phone from Verizon's website. I Previously, I had to use my own website, and I believe it's episode 68. I'm not 100% on that. But in episode 68, I had a little tutorial on how to turn on audio description, and they call it digital video services, which is a little misleading, but it's audio description. So we double-checked that I had that all right. And again, there's two settings that you have to do. You have to turn DVS on and you have to go to one of the audio, audio enabled. I, I don't remember. It used to be called second, second uh, audio program. So back in the day, for example, when you turned on Monday Night Football, if you had SAP on, you could hear the broadcast in Spanish. I don't know if that's still the case, but that's where the described track is for audio description in shows that have it. So we turned it on. And we, pretty, we felt pretty confident that it was on as much as we could have it be on. And we went to the commercial, again, on the DVR. Liz ran the commercial. There's no audio description. We then looked through the menu to find a show that had the DVS logo on it, just, just to the right of the closed caption uh, description in the, in the information of the show. So we knew that if it had DVS, it should work. And just, for, just and I've mentioned this before, the fact that you can turn on closed captioning by the press of one button on the remote 
is so infuriating, and I'm using that a lot because I guess you know I've been pretty angry for the last eight weeks. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just something that's just dumb to me. Why is it when you have somebody who's deaf who can clearly pull up the menu, look for what they need, and turn on closed captioning? Why can't it be that easy? Why can't why couldn't it be as easy as pushing one button on the remote? That and I should add that the Verizon Fios remote is very tactile. So if you tell me second row from the bottom, third from the left, that button is for audio description. Why can't it be that easy? Why do I need to go turn something else on or find somebody to help me turn that on? And then it doesn't work. At least if I was pushing a button, I can just push a button back. Or if by accident somebody turned it on or I forgot to turn it off and Liz was watching TV, why couldn't it be just as easy like that for her to shut it off? So we turn it on. And so now we're looking through the program guide to see if anything has DVS next to CC so we can see if audio description is working. And a rerun of Young Sheldon was on. I don't know what channel. But we... Went to that station, put it on, no audio description. We found something else, put it on, no audio description. At this point, I was pretty frustrated, and Liz figures, well, i got to make dinner now. So she starts making dinner. She's like, why don't you call Verizon? (laughs) That was a mistake because it's dinner time, and they're asking me to do all sorts of things once I tell them the problem. And I should add, when I said I was having trouble with audio description or digital video services, they said, oh, you want to put on closed captioning? And I said, no, I want to put on audio description. Oh, yes, closed captioning, there's a button on the remote. I said, no, I don't want closed captioning. I know that everybody thinks that the closed captioning and deaf is the sexy disability, but I can't see, and I need somebody to tell me what's going on on the screen. I can hear okay, and right now it's just okay. (laughs) So how do I put that on? And I guess at that point she typed into her computer, oh, how do you start audio description? And she tells me everything that was on that web page that I had already told Liz. I said, yeah, we went through this. She's like, okay, I'm going to shut your box down and reboot it. I said, okay, that's fine. I don't think it'll do anything, but sure, go ahead. And so she does that, and it didn't really matter. There wasn't anything recording at the time. So, of course, when we pull it back up, she's asking me to do some things. And I said, well, again, I can't see. I'm blind. Let me see if my wife can stop making dinner and come in here and help us out. And Liz puts everything down, comes into the living room, and she's doing everything this lady says. And, of course, it's not working. Oh, well, your box is bad. Okay. I don't think it is, but you want to send me a new one? Fine. So she's going to send me a new box. And I'm willing to bet that that's not going to work either. While Liz was, once we finished with all that, Liz went back to making dinner and I had gone upstairs to use the bathroom and I thought, I'm going to go in and see if I can set it up on, we have a TV in our bedroom that only Liz uses. I never go in there. There's no place in that, in our bedroom other than the bed to watch TV. And I'm like eight miles from the TV in the bedroom. So there's no way I would even watch TV in there. The audio quality sucks. But what I found out when I grabbed the remote it was easier for me to read the menu on that TV. It's a much newer TV than the one we have in our living room. The one in our living room is, <laughs> it's, uh, let's see, from 2006. It was originally my parents, and they paid for this flat screen Sony. I think they paid around 2500 bucks for it back in the day. Now I, I don't think you could pay more than five or 600 for it. Uh, but the sound quality is outstanding. It's got speakers on the side. The sound is much better than from our cheapo tv in our bedroom so at some point we'll probably get a new tv but (laughs) that's the story that's a story for another day and i'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes so i pull it up and i i do everything and i then pull the web page up to make sure i've turned both things on that i needed to everything is good i then start looking for something that has dvs in the information screen because now it's after six o'clock and Young Sheldon ended, and I'm having trouble finding anything. Either on TBS or TNT was a Medea show or movie. I don't, I guess it was a movie, but it had the DVS thing there. So I thought, let me try it. There's 
a long stretch where it seems like people are protesting or something. And well, I know they are because Whoopi Goldberg, who was in this movie, did like a voiceover from the a fake view episode talking about it. And so I know that there was no audio description because they kept cutting back to different things where there were long stretches of just ancillary audio, whether it was music and background chatter or people chanting or clapping. There was no audio description. And so I shut it off and I went downstairs and I told Liz, I said, I just tried and I was surprised how easy I was able to set up the two things on the TV upstairs and how much easier I could see it. And again, I, I don't know why. My vision that day was as good or as bad as it usually is. And why could I see it on the one but not on the other? That I don't know. But what I do know is audio description didn't work on that box either. And again, maybe it wasn't actually on that episode or that movie or whatever. I don't know. But once we get that box and it doesn't work, I will dig a little deeper. And I felt bad because when I saw, as I mentioned earlier, when I saw that commercial, I was so mad. How could you have a product specifically geared to blind and visually impaired people and not have any kind of voiceover in the spot. And I'm willing to believe that if when I talk to Ashley during the week after I tell her I found no audio description on that commercial, the next time they do spots, they will have some sort of voiceover so that they don't have an issue in the future. Again, a person who is not blind or visually impaired doesn't need a guide dog. They can clearly find the elevator on their own or the door on their own or whatever. So they can look at the screen and look at the great graphics of the cute dogs running around and doing whatever. And they can read the graphics that are on the screen that says Southeastern Guide Dogs and guidedogs.org. And maybe it had a phone number as well. I don't, I don't remember. So it was, I, I came down, I thought, that's the episode this week, and that's terrible. But when I got the call back, I felt bad how ready I was to jump all over Southeastern Guide Dogs. And I don't know how good or a bad of an organization they are. But in this instance, again, Ashley was very friendly, very professional, very apologetic. And she is the right one to have in that job. And I hope that by me mentioning this to them, they'll be able to figure out what the story is and get to the bottom of why there was an audio description on that spot that ran on Cooking Channel at whatever time <laughs> whatever time it ran. And I'll also find out when I speak to Ashley, was that something that ran on local cable or was that nationally on the Cooking Channel? Again, with cable, you don't know 100% of the time, with, you know, at least as a viewer. Obviously, Ashley would know. So that's the story with, with Southeastern Guide Dogs, and I can't wait to find out more about that. Now, I mentioned earlier uh, about maybe getting a new TV. On the most recent episode of White Canes Connect, we talked to Sam Seavey from The Blind Life. His YouTube channel has over 51,000 subscribers, and he does a lot of great things within the blindness community, whether it's creating a video tutorial for easy fixes on your iPhone with a YouTube short, or he is talking to other blind folks who are doing specific jobs, various jobs, even though they're blind, whether he's flying an airplane, being blind. He's just a good guy. It was great talking with him. And the whole connection came because Lisa had a question about a TV. <laughs> She wanted to know, hey, my TV, I need something that's fairly accessible. What do you recommend? And he had recommended Samsung. And when she told me she was going back and forth with him and this guy was getting back to her, I said, oh, he'd be a great guest. See if you can get him. And so she got him. And so that is episode 58 of White Canes Connect. We talked to Sam CV. It was a lot of fun. And maybe I'll look into, <laughs> maybe I'll look into a Samsung TV too, one that is a little bit easier for me to work with and maybe just a little bit easier to see where I can get up close and take a look at the 
channel guide and see what I'm recording or see what menu options I'm turning off and on. One thing that I found funny that Sam mentioned, he has a very low-tech solution for a lot of things. He carries a 10x magnifier in his pocket, not an electronic magnifier, an actual glass magnifier. Uh, I don't remember the name. Um, I want to say Eichbach or Eichenbach, something like that. And and I thought, you know, I wonder if that would help me because I'm still having trouble with my Zoom H1n. I tried using Zoom on my phone and I was just it was just not able to get clear enough to read. And when I used Seeing AI, it just wasn't reading some of the things I needed to. So I'm hoping to take that Zoom H1n down to Washington for Washington Seminar in a few weeks when I go down there when we lobby Congress as we do every year. And hopefully I'll have it set up that I can take it and get some, whether it's interviews or just clips of what's going on, or if it's just things like, just listen. (laughs) In this week's Just Listen, there's the segue, it might almost be qualified as ASMR. Not 100% sure. But because I don't get out much, and since I've already used the timeout in the backyard with Ziggy, when he was running around and sniffing and whatever, I thought, what am I going to use this week? I left the house on January 7th, and it was my dad's birthday along with Jacob's. And so for my dad's birthday, we went to the cemetery to visit his grave and bring him some Whoppers, uh, one of his favorite things, especially in (laughs) in the last few years of his life. So we kind of left this little sacrifice type of thing. It's a little weird. Um, since Liz's parents have both passed, we've noticed a lot of folks in that cemetery, they bring things, substantial things that they leave on the grave site. So the little bits of food that we leave that animals or insects could easily eat, it doesn't seem so bad after that. Now, of course, my parents are Jewish, so there's not as many things like that <laughs> at their cemetery. Uh, but we did take some Whoppers, and that's what we left for my dad. But I left the house. That was January 7th. I didn't leave the house again until January 14th. So what did I do? What was I going to use for just listen? And I thought there's one thing that I do every day during the week and most weekends too. That's make lunch for Ziggy and I. I usually have an omelet for lunch, nothing in it, just two eggs and turmeric and black pepper and salt. And Ziggy just gets an egg over medium. And so in this week's Just Listen... It's lunch with Ziggy. All right, Ziggy, your egg is on, buddy. minutes on a tea timer. Tea timer. Four minutes and 30 seconds. Starting now. That's a good boy. Bon appétit. Your tea timer is done. I can tell you that he enjoyed lunch that day. (laughs) And he enjoys it every day. I always ask him after, how was it? Was it good? And he'll lick his lips. It always makes me laugh. So that's all I have for you in episode 214. I really do appreciate listening. Please reach out on social media at David Benj, D-A-V-I-D-B-E-N-J, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and at youtube.com slash David Benj. You can also listen to the episodes. It's just a static image there. There's no video yet. You can also reach me via email, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. Please reach out, questions, comments, show ideas. If you've got tips, tricks, anything. You like something I do, you hate something I do, whatever you got, please reach out. Again, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. There's also the phone number, 646-926-6350. 
You've got up to three minutes. Please leave your name and town. If you do leave a voicemail, I will use it on an upcoming episode. And again, same thing, questions, comments, show ideas, review, what you like, what you hate, what you want me to do more of, what you want me to not do, (laughs) anything. Again, 646-926-6350. Again, I really do appreciate listening to this episode of I Can't See You. Be well, stay safe, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.